Hello, this lesson we're going to focus on drawing from a secondary image, so from an image that you have found. You can use an image, um, a, a photograph, you can use a picture from a newspaper or a magazine, an old book, or you can print an image if you have a printer at home. Any image at all. Black and white ones are easier because then it's already got the tonal scales for you and you're not having to translate colour into tone. So the learning objectives to improve today, be able to apply the measuring technique that we're going to use for a stretch level, demonstrate how to recreate accurate proportions and also apply light, medium and dark tone. For the challenge learning objective, create 3D form, so be able to make your drawing look three dimensional using a range of contrasting and gradually blended tones. So when it's really, really, really bold, but you've also got that soft blend and apply accurate and intricate detail. Okay, so when you've got your chosen image and your piece of paper, so I've got this image that I just found from an old cookbook and I've cut around it in a size that I found reasonable to draw. Um, so it's a bit smaller than A5. You then need to draw around your image. You can either measure it with a ruler or just carefully draw around it and then cut out that piece of paper. Okay, so I've now got my piece of paper the same size as my image and that makes it a lot more easier for me to be able to measure and here's how. So if you turn your image upside down and then hide most of your image with your piece of paper, that's going to help me draw from my right side of the brain. The reason being is it's hidden most of that image so I'm not having to think, oh I'm drawing a broccoli and then I'll end up with something that looks like a trunk with a cloud on top. I'm actually going to be able to focus my brain where is that tone, where is that line, where is that shape, how long is that shape, how curved is that shape and that's what your brain should be doing and that's drawing on the right side of the brain. So drawing what you can see, not what you think you can see. So I would start with about an inch here and I would start to draw that inch first. So this is why having a piece of paper the same size as your image is a lot easier because I can effectively cheat. So I can say okay that starts there so that would be about there that starts there, so that would be about there. And then I can start to draw really, really lightly, really, really lightly my outline. That shape is a curve that goes in, almost looks like a little bit of a, a shark's fin. And that sometimes helps me when I'm drawing to imagine other things because I would never have drawn a little shark's fin if I was just imagining a broccoli. Um, whereas now I can actually see that shape so really, really lightly. Another thing you can do with measuring is you can actually take your image out from underneath your page. You can put it over your piece of paper. You can hover over with your pencil and say, okay, that little shark's fin should come to about there. I can see, look, mine's too small. So you can actually check your proportions are completely accurate by taking your image out and measuring it that way. And as you're building it up, I would just do that to double check if you're unsure about anything. So I can see that that's a little bit wrong. Make sure that you use a rubber as you're going along. So once you've got your basic outline for the first inch or so, you can start to apply tone. I always find it so much easier to start with the dark. So I can see that it's darker along the edge here. So as I said, if you're using a black and white image, it is easier because you can already see you know, where's medium grey, where's light grey, um, you just have to translate that yourself. So I've got my pencil at quite a slant and that's because this is really softly blended. So if it's, I need it to be softly blended, I need my pencil to be really, really slanted so I've got that smooth, wide surface to the pencil. So I'm just going to build that up, change that shape a little bit and I'm going to start to shade and where it's dark, I'll exaggerate that dark. I like to draw um, quite, quite bold. Some people like to draw completely realistic. Some people are really, really delicate. It's what works for you, but I like to really, really exaggerate the dark because I think it makes it look more 3D and more interesting. So I'm also shading in circles because you don't want to have when you shade and you can see the lines go that way or that way and you can see the gaps and it looks scratchy you want it to be soft so if you shade in a circle it blends it a lot more evenly really really important is to leave your white areas white your page is already white 
If you colour your white areas in grey, if you tone them in, it's going to look flat and it won't look 3D. So here is very white as you can see. So I'm just going to tone up to here and leave that white and try and blend back into dark on this side. Okay, so I've built up that inch of tone. I've tried to look really, really closely for the tone. So here, for example, I noticed there was a light line going across there. So I've got that in, I've exaggerated it. That's really dark, that's really dark, and then it goes to light. And as I said, leave it white when it's really, really pale. Really, really soft, light tone here. Back into fade into dark here. Neaten the edges, you don't want to see your outlines. Your outlines should be blended into the main form by now. So once you've done that, you can just move on and start to draw some more but at this stage you might get a bit confused about the shape so I would actually just use the measuring technique and say okay well I want to go up to this curve for example where does that go up to so I'll just rest my pencil over there keep my hands still and then just do a little dot so it's a little construction line and all I need is that dot because then when I put it back under here and again it does really help to put it under this page because it is making helping my brain to focus on the shapes that are within this so I can't think oh I know what a broccoli is and make it up instead just focusing on the tones where's light where's dark what's that shape so as I said now I know that that is that corner then I can build up the rest of that shape there and then I'm going to do the same on this side I can even just put that next to there and say, so, okay, well, where does this end reach off the end of the page? It will be there. So then I can just join that up. And then I could do the same on this page. On this side, sorry, where is this corner? Where is this line? That would be a point that I should know where it is. So I should just take it off and do a little dot. So then I know that that goes to there. And then I do construction marks. So I know where I'm going. Where does that little part of the broccoli start? That starts there. And then it goes all the way to there. So now I know where things are. I'll put that over and I'll start to get that bit of my outline done as pale as possible. Because if it's pale, then you won't see your outlines. You don't want to be able to see them. This shape is bumpy. Goes along like this, down and joins up there. And then there's a little bit on this side here as well. And then I can start to, I'll add those construction marks in here because it's quite complicated there. And then I'll start to add that tone as well. Okay, so I've added so the majority of the tone on this area. What I've done is really, really focused on exaggerating the dark. So when it's dark, I'm really, really pushing my pencil really, really hard to really exaggerate it and show that off to make sure it's really, really bold. I've left this area just so you can see how I do it. So it's quite complicated. There's lots of tiny little changes in tone so always start with the dark areas and just put those in and then lighter areas and i'll start to build that up so you might be wondering why i'm doing it upside down it is less important i suppose because i'm doing a broccoli and there's some unrecognizable shapes in there but that's the key word unrecognizable you want your image to be unrecognizable to you. If you're doing a face, a hand or an animal or something that you do recognize, then it's so much easier if you put your image upside down and, ho and hide the majority of it because then you don't know what you're drawing. Your brain cannot recognize an image in the same way when it's upside down and that's really helpful to you because if you don't recognize what you're drawing, you're more likely to be able to trust what you can see and draw that rather than let any misconceptions overwhelm you and draw what you think you see. So that's the idea behind drawing upside down, which has been done for a long time now when artists have been learning how to draw, okay? So I always, always, always start with teaching someone how to draw upside down because it helps them shift onto that right side of the brain and focus on what is actually there. There is no way if I was just going to imagine a broccoli that I would have done that little blob there and this line here and that dark line here and that shape that you just couldn't imagine it. Whereas when it's upside down and particularly a close up image, it's so much easier to look at all that detail and to focus on that detail and actually recreate it rather than drawing what you think you see. So try to leave the white areas white, 
press really hard when it's dark and press less hard when it's light and layered to make it blend so if it doesn't look like it softly changes tone then you just need to layer with your pencil over and over really really lightly with a slanted pencil you can when you need to fade to what you can just use your finger to blend it into the white because i don't want that to be dark down here i want it to be white so once you've done that now i'm going to continue doing this area i've already added the construction lines into this shape here so i can start to add that tone so in the middle of this shape there's a tone that is here it's a lot it's darker in there and lighter on the outside so that's what your brain should be doing as you draw so what is this bit darker than the, ne the bit next to it is it lighter that curves and actually the dark bit goes all across when it comes to here it starts to go all across and there's another little funny shape there now obviously i know that that's the top the flower of the broccoli i know that but i'm still trying to force myself to forget about that and to just think of it as a blob with some dark bits in because it helps you focus on what is actually there and again try to get rid of those misconceptions that you have about what you think goes where and what it should look like it doesn't matter what you think you should just be looking at the image to help you recreate a secondary image. So as you can see, I've added that dark line there and then I'm gonna press less hard with my pencil to just add the lighter area on the outside of this shape. Really, really helpful to start with dark because then you can judge the rest of the tone around that. So it's really dark in here. And then I've got some little blobs here that are different tones so I'll just add them in little shapes here and it's darker in here and then I can see this little shape here with lots of teeny tiny little circles and it will really really darken here so I'm pushing really really hard I always do the outline of a shape first because then I know I've got the neat edge because edges should be really perfectly neat and then I can really just push hard hard as I can and really exaggerate that dark tone in there it might be I suppose scary to go that dark on your page because you can't rub it out if it's that dark but if you've not exaggerated your dark tone it's not going to look 3d so now I can get in all those little circles and those even dark bits I'm starting with first just little dots and then I'm going to kind of do the lighter shapes and circles and blobs and again there's no way if I was just drawing a broccoli from imagination that I would get this amount of detail. So this is why working from a secondary image can be really helpful to teach you how to draw in the first instance. So even along here, there's a slight dark line that comes here. So I'm gonna, just little circles. It's not really dark, but it's noticeable. Do that first, always get the darkest areas first. That bit should have come down here that's really dark that's a bit lighter here and then I work on the other side as well exaggerating the dark so I can see this shape that I've got which is this shape on here and again see how dark that is I've not quite measured that yet so I'll cheat a little bit put my image over the top that ends there but it curves round this time because this is quite a big shape I've actually just drawn construction lines that are going to help me follow that shape around here like this then I'll draw it out and I can focus on that inside area but to start with I'll start with getting the outlines really really dark and neat I can see that this area is one of the darkest areas in the whole image therefore you should really be exaggerating that and go for it and make it really, really bold. And then I'm just going to be careful to get the little shapes inside of that. It depends how precise you want to be. I don't have to be that precise with a broccoli because broccolis are all different shapes and sizes. But sometimes you do have to measure every single little bit and it depends on your style of drawing. You might want to be entirely accurate and realistic. You might want to be a little bit more fluid with the way that you draw so this is really good to find your way of drawing as well you might instinctually want to measure everything and you might not so it's 
it's good for finding your way. But you can see how I draw quite bold, because I really like to exaggerate all the tones. So now I can get all those little dots and dark bits in there and start to build that up as well. And then I'm going to move on to the end bit. Okay, so once you're more than halfway or about halfway of your image, it's really good just to do the whole rest of the outline. So I'm just going to hover my pencil over there and then I can start to add that shape so I know that that's right. And I've just built out the overall outline. Any dominant bits that you, like for example here, that you want to know where they are, just do little really, really pale construction marks or lines just so you know where they are and then I would actually turn it the right way around because if you still continue to draw this bit from that it's too far away from you where it's much easier if you have it really close to you so I've taken my image out from underneath um, it's still upside down but I'm going to put it like that so it's much closer so my drawing is underneath my picture and that way I don't have to worry about that I'm just focusing on that and again it really helps your brain that the more you get rid of the more it is easier to focus on just that section so then I'm going to start building up as I have done the whole way through the dark areas first so really really exaggerate how dark that is in there and start to build up that really really bold area And then those little squiggle circles that are within here that are really, really dark and then they blend to lighter. So make sure that you've got a really sharp pencil for your intricate details. You can really tell when you're looking at a drawing if a person hasn't bothered to sharpen their pencil because the detail is going to be too chunky and not refined. So make sure that you've got a sharp pencil and I'm starting to add that detail that comes out here. So for this last section, I'm looking really, really, got it really close, looking at all that detail. But what I'm actually not doing is looking and measuring at every single bit. So you have to be realistic about what you're going to measure and what you're not. And I'm not going to measure every single one of these tiny little bits on here. Instead, I'm noticing that it's dark, it fades to light, and there's some lines that come out in between the darkness so I'm building it dark and I'm getting some lines there um, and this is what I mean about if you do something like a fruit or a vegetable a tree a leaf something like that you've got the freedom to not worry too much about it because they all come in different shapes and sizes but some people like to be entirely accurate and go for that perfect representation of the image it's completely up to you so you see I'm really going to exaggerate that dark and then blend it out to the light really 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 light as it fades out and then get those last bits of details before I go over to refine. Okay, so I've finished the majority of my drawing now. It's really up to you at this stage how far you go with refining it. So I could put them both next to each other the right way up now and I can look which bits do I need to refine. So maybe in here, that bit's a bit too pointy, it needs to be a bit more curved. And what you might notice as well is as you've shaded, your white areas have become less white. So you just use a rubber, the side of a clean rubber, and you can just drag it down. And what it will do is just exaggerate your white because you do really want the white areas to be really, really bright to get that contrast between light and dark. So you can just make sure that that's still really, really white. And you can spend as much time as you want really on it, just refining and adding as much detail as you can. So give it a go, use any image, make sure your image is good quality. So have a look at magazines um, or if you can print one off um, and then send it to me. Well done.